In this session, we'll be starting with one important class of fungus, which is called Ascomycetes. Now, Ascomycetes, when you talk about Ascomycetes, are also called sac fungi. They are also called diverse fungi. And I was telling you about that most of the fungus are multicellular, but yeast is unicellular fungus. That unicellular fungus also belongs to this particular class called Ascomycetes. So you will have mostly, most of the fungus like Penicillium are multicellular. Penicillium is a particular member of Ascomycetes which produces you penicillin. When you talk about the yeast which is Saccharomyces which is used for beer, wine or bread production is a unicellular fungus. Now when you talk about mode of nutrition, all these modes of nutrition are present. They are saprophytes, they are decomposer. When they are saprophyte, they will be decomposing the substances. They are parasitic, like penicillium you see is a parasitic fungus. They are coprophilus. Now one very important thing is coprophilus. Coprophilus is something which is growing upon the dung. So the fungus which grows on the dung of animals, dung of what you call cattle, are called coprophilus fungi. When you look about the structure, because I've told you in phycomycetes, the mycelia is aseptate. But in all other classes, you will see the septate mycelia. So you will have septate mycelia which is branched and cell wall is always made up of chitin. Chitin will be coming up in all the other classes even now. Only oomycetes members will have what you call cellulosic cell wall. All other members will have the cell wall which is made up of chitin. When you look forward for the reproduction, they basically reproduce with the help of choridia which is the mode of asexual reproduction. For sexual reproduction, they basically show gametangial contact and somatogamy. Hopefully you know about somatogamy, I've told you like the somatic cells will be coming up and fusing. They show crozier method of diacaronization. Now what is di what you call diacaronization? Diacaronization means you have one nuclei, you have another nuclei, both of them will be coming sitting together and they will be forming what you call this stage, it's called dicaryon stage. So this process is called diacaronization. Now what happens, because the mycelium is something like this, when the mycelium is like straight, you have this particular mycelium. Let's suppose this is N, this is N, this is N. Now, what happens if that particular, it takes a shape like this, you know, this is something like crozier shape. And because of this crozier, this N and this N, so it would be easy that this N goes to this N. You're getting it? So that this particular, it will become dicaryon state. So this follow for the dicaryonization, this particular method is coming up, which has been asked in AIMS once. So for dicaryonization in Ascomycetes member, they basically follow the shape, which is called crozier. And this method is called crozier method of dicaryonization. Ascus will be the site for karyogamy and meiosis will be taking place, which will be producing you ascospores. So basically they have a fruiting body because of the name. Ascomycetes, they have the fruiting body called Ascocarp. In the Ascocarp, there will be a place which is called Ascus. In Ascus, the meiosis will be happening and will be producing this type of spore called Ascospores. When you talk about Ascocarp, the fruiting body, that can be different type of fruiting body shapes. One is Clistothecium, if it is closed. If it is open, it is called Apothecium. And if it is flash shaped, it is called Parithecium. So remember these shapes of fruiting body, which is Ascocarp. There can be different type of shapes. Based upon this, the questions are also coming. When you talk about member, very important member is penicillium. If you heard about penicillium notatum, the particular fungus strain where what you call Alexander Fleming is related to. So Alexander Fleming was working on bacteria, but eventually what he saw is like in one of the colonies of bacteria was inhibited. And it was inhibited by this fungus called penicillium notatum. And then he, what you call, made the conclusion that this penicillium was releasing one drug and which was inhibiting the growth of bacteria and the drug is called penicillin. So if someone would ask you, who produces penicillin, your answer goes as penicillium notatum. But if the question is asked, which fungus is used for the commercialization of penicillin? We don't use what you call, if we want to make large scale production of penicillin, we don't take help of penicillium notatum. That was just the laboratory scale. You will have to mass scale up. For that, you have another particular fungus species, which is called penicillium chrysogenum. So remember these two names. What Alexander Fleming worked upon was penicillium notatum. What we use for the commercialization of penicillin is what you call penicillium chrysogenum. Now what happens in the second fungus, which is called aspergillus? Aspergillus produces you some toxins which are called aflatoxins. 
Aspergillus flavus is the complete name if we can talk about. Aspergillus flavus. Aspergillus flavus will produce you these aflatoxins. And aflatoxins are toxics. They are basically the carcinogens. When you talk about Claviceps, the species is purpurea. Claviceps purpurea is related to ergot and rye. The disease is called ergotism. Now, particular Claviceps is also producing lysergic acid, diamethylamide, which is also called LSD. And LSD causes hallucinations. So remember about these names because all these members are very important and their effects, their features are also very important. In some of the other exams, they, would have the, they will be asking you about Ascomycetes members or their effect. Now when you talk about morels and truffles, so morels and truffles are edible esco carp. We eat their fruiting body. Remember this important question. What we eat, what the fungus, what we eat is mushroom. And mushroom belong to Basidiomycetes member. But they could also ask you the question, are there some members from the Ascomycetes, those you eat, your answer comes as morels and truffles, are those members, those belong to what you call Ascomycetes, but their fruiting bodies are eaten. One is Neurospora crassa. Neurospora crassa, it's called Drosophila of plant kingdom. It is also called pink mold. And based upon this particular, what you call Neurospora, there was an important experiment done, which I'll be te teaching you in the next sessions. Now, when you talk about Saccharomyces, you will be talking about Saccharomyces cerevisiae that is used as brewery, what you call fungus or bread fungus for brewery products like wine, like beer and all or for the bread production, we always take what you call, you know, Saccharomyces. You have another fungus called Gibrella fusicorae, which produces you Gibrelin. Now, Gibrelin is one among the plant growth hormone, if you remember. So gibberellins are produced by this particular fungus called Gibrella fusicora and this particular fungus was found in Japan while the farmers were working on some seedlings those have started showing you some uh, what you call abnormal growth. So remember all these what you call members and their features. So next session we'll be starting with another class of fungus which is Basidiomycetes.